Welcome to the third installment of Implicit Differentiation. And in this example, we're going to look at not a first derivative, but a second derivative using implicit differentiation. So if you've missed the first two videos and you don't know what implicit differentiation is, you should probably go back there and, and watch those uh, because I'm going to assume that you know just a little bit about implicit differentiation. So let's go ahead and, and get started here. And let's differentiate this equation with respect to x. Well, what's the derivative of x squared with respect to x? It's just 2x. And how about the derivative of y squared with respect to x? Well, by now you should know that we have to use the chain rule. And the derivative of the outside function is 2y multiplied by the derivative of the inside function, which is just y prime. And the derivative of 25 is just 0. Okay, so now the technique is to get all your y primes to one side. And since there's only one, that's really easy. And now we divide by 2y, and we have our first derivative. There it is. Now, now don't forget that this still means, this still has the same meaning as any old derivative. It's the slope of the tangent line to this curve um, at a given point xy in this case because this is an implicit equation so it's in terms of both the x and the y coordinate. Okay well how do you find the second derivative then? Well you can imagine that we're just going to repeat this process so basically now I'm going to take my first derivative and I'm going to differentiate, differentiate it with respect to x. <clears throat> well what's the derivative of the first derivative of y? Well I hope you said, or maybe you didn't say it out loud, that might be kind of weird staring at your computer, but uh, maybe you thought it was y, prime, y double prime and you'd be correct. So the derivative of y prime with respect to x is simply y double prime, or the second derivative of y with respect to x, equals, okay now be careful here because here we have the quotient rule, and not only do we have the quotient rule, but we have some y's in there, so we have implicit differentiation creeping in yet again. So what is the quotient rule? Well, what's the derivative of the numerator with respect to x? It's actually, you know what? I will do the derivatives in in uh, this color. In, so the derivative of negative x is negative 1 multiplied, multiplied by the... the uh, the, the denominator minus the derivative of the denominator. Now what's the derivative of y with respect to x? Well the derivative of y with respect to y is just 1 is just 1 multiplied by the derivative of y with respect to x. So this is the derivative of the denominator. I didn't really need to write the 1 but I just want to re-emphasize the idea of the chain rule here. This is the derivative of the outside function multiplied by the derivative of the inside function. Okay, but don't forget to multiply that by your numerator. Okay, there you go. So the things in hot pink there are the derivatives and the things in blue are, are just these numerators and denominators. Okay, all over y squared. There you go. Now let's clean it up a little bit. And we're almost done. We have negative y plus we have a negative 1y prime times negative x that makes it a plus y prime x and this is all over y squared now you might think well we're done we found we found y double prime we found the second derivative of y uh, but this is this is just too messy um, too many too many different things we have a y double prime we have a y we have a y single prime an x uh, just too many things going around. So it would be really nice if I could eliminate one of them. Well, look at this. Do we know Do we know what that is? And the answer is yes, we do. We do know what it is because it, it was the first derivative right here. It's what we found first. So you can guess that we're going to make a little substitution here. So I have y double prime equals negative y plus... I'm going to put this in parentheses and come back to the substitution here in a minute. 
but let's substitute it with a different color negative x over y so this was my y prime and I just made that substitution <clears throat> okay so as you could guess we, we are officially done um, maybe we should clean up the algebra a little bit we, we can do that it doesn't take too long we have negative y uh, what would this be this is really negative x times x would be a negative x squared over y all over y squared and you can actually clean this up a little bit by multiplying by multiplying the top and the bottom <clears throat> excuse me by y you, you can actually do a lot of things this is just what I would do to get rid of this complex fraction here um, let me give myself a little bit more room and we, we will be done okay understand that multiplying by y over y is just just multiplying by a disguised form of 1. So I get y double prime, oops, y double prime equals negative y squared minus x squared all over y cubed. That's good enough. There might be some more things you can do with that. You can play around with it and put it in different forms, but that's good enough. So there you have it. You have uh, implicit differentiation. Um, involving a second derivative, just remember to substitute your first derivative back in uh, to clean up your final result. Uh, hope that helped. We'll see you around.